What's up everyone and welcome back to Pokemon X and Y. We're here in Geosenge Town where we saw last episode the ultimate weapon was actually, I guess, dug up from the ground here and here it is. I don't think you can really dig something like this up from the ground, but I guess it sort of just rose from the ground. It sprouted from it like a blooming flower, which is, I guess, what they compare it to, and it's kind of what it looks like, but as you can see, these poor people's homes have been devastated by the arise of this giant weapon in the middle of their town. I wonder if, like, this is covered under, like, natural disasters or something. Like, can we start a fun for these poor people's houses, you know? Like, when a hurricane strikes the people's homes, you know, that stuff is covered and people do all these sort of campaigns for it. So I wonder if this is covered in the Kalos region, like, uh, homeowner's guide. You know, they have, like, hey, just in case a giant flower-shaped weapon... What? You bought a new life for five million bucks? I could have done that for you for like two bucks, girl. Anyway, when a giant flower just spouts from the middle of their town and destroys their homes, I wonder if that's like covered in their like homeowner's insurance or whatever. But yeah, here we are in Geosense Town. The only way to actually get in here is by flying. As you can see, there's team flare grunts blocking off that entrance. You can actually, I believe, enter over from this way because I actually did a little bit of running around and stuff like that in between episodes. So yeah, you can exit out that way, but you can't come down from Silage Town. Not sure why they chose to block off. Well, I guess it's because that's where like the Pokemon gravestones that they're stealing their energy from are. But we're actually supposed to head up here, which if you remember a bunch of episodes ago, Whoa, Team Flare gang sign, yeah, hashtag Team Flare swag. Make sure to keep those coming. Team Flare swag, boys and girls. Anyway, as I was saying uh, a couple of episodes ago, or well, I guess now it's a bunch of episodes ago, uh, we actually saw a Team Flare grunt sort of run off in this direction when we first came to Geosenge Town, and he sort of disappeared into this rock formation, which I'm gonna assume now we were right about that, and it is actually the where the Team Flare hideout is actually located, where like, last time we were in Lysander Labs, which isn't really the hideout of Team Flare, but it's kind of just Lysander's Labs. It's where he makes his magical inventions, like the Holocaster and his other successful experiments. I think I said that he made the iPhone 8 or 7, something like that. What iPhone are we even on now? I think we're on the 5. So yeah, let's say he made the 7. He's gonna make his great invention in uh, two more iPhone iterations. Uh, but anyway, we're actually learning Sky Uppercut here, which is way better than this parting shot move we got. Honestly, I thought it was gonna be more like U-turn, and it ended up being just, uh, it lowers, uh, it lowers attack and special attack, I believe, and then just raises or switches us out afterwards. And I think it's usually a move that goes second in battle, so... Overall, it didn't end up being that helpful, so let's actually test out our Sky Uppercut. Why? Why? Why would you avoid my attack and then use your fake tears? That doesn't help, man. Are you serious? Why did... <laughs> we missed it twice, man. That is just bad luck at this point. So our speed is actually going to harshly fall, which means we're probably slower now. And, of course, he gets to hit his high jump kick. I don't get to hit my Sky Uppercut, but... There we go. Oh, we finally hit Sky Uppercut. And that's gonna one-shot kill Scrafty, but yeah, somehow he hits his attack on the first try. I miss it twice Very very unfortunate, but uh, we got a goal back coming out here um, I guess I'll switch out considering you know what no we'll stay in we can be faster than this goal back Can't we are we actually faster than a speeding goal bat? I really don't know. Let's go for crunch and see if we are nope goes for the Some kind of attack. I didn't even pay attention was that wasn't quick attack though. Wow, so Sancho already taken out. I think that's actually the first time that Sancho gets taken out ever. So let's go for Barbara, who I've actually renamed our Barbrickle Barbara, and given her a couple of awesome moves, like Shell Smash, which is basically one of the best moves on Barbrickle, because basically it breaks its rocks or something. It's supposed to break down its rocks, and that lowers his defense and special defense, but actually raises... All the rest of his stats, which I think is really good on this Pokemon, especially because he's already got a really high attack. Um, his best stat is actually defense, which kind of makes sense. I mean, it's a giant rock with arms coming out of it, but still, uh, Shell Smash, pretty good move on Barbrickle. And actually, Sancho unfortunately died, so I guess I'm not really gonna... You know what? Let's heal up Sancho. He should be in this battle. He helped us out against the latest gym. He helped us out in a couple of other situations, so I feel like he has deserved his spot on this team. No, not you, Finks. You're still not even evolved. And actually, to evolve Gudra into, or Sligu into Gudra, we need some rain. So you gotta make it rain. We don't have any rain yet. Hey, Serena! I felt like I needed someone on this journey, you know? We can't do it alone, guys. We've gotta save the world, but we need Serena's help. 
When I was in Lysander's lab, the masked heroes told me when he was going. They also told me when Team Flare's plans were to do with the ultimate weapon. Come on, let's stop Team Flare. No, we have to stop Lysander himself. All right, so let's go and head into Team Flare's headquarters. Yep, Team Flare's secret headquarters. Whoa, this is a weird top-down perspective thing. Let's go ahead and push the button. This is weird. It kind of reminds me of like... Uh, I don't know, like a snake game where you go around eating things and then things grow out of your tail as you eat more and more. I feel like we, we we're gonna have a bunch of little oranges coming behind me. Walk out, walk out, walk out, walk out, walk out. Pfft. Oh no, that's that's Pac-Man. What is a snake music? Does snake even have music? I don't know. Do you, you even know what I'm talking about? Is that the little snake? Everybody knows what snake is. Of course you guys know what I'm talking about. Uh, but this is Team Flare's headquarters. It actually looks really cool. It actually looks like a headquarters of something, you know, not really like the ones that Team Magma and Aqua had where it was just a an underground, underwater, weird place where they stood around awkwardly waiting for people to battle them. Here, they're actually doing work, you know, they're sitting by desks and, uh, I mean, I guess they're not really doing that much work. What? Here is Lysander. Let's see what he's got to say. Remove us from this terrible situation that we found ourselves in. The ultimate weapon's flower has finally bloomed above the soil. Don't you find its beauty captivating? As we speak, it draws its energy from the legendary Pokemon. We're not letting you use the ultimate weapon. Even though resources, space, and energy on this planet are limited, the number of people and Pokemon has increased to an unsustainable level. Whether it's money or energy, the ones who steal are the ones who win in this world. But that doesn't mean you have the right to destroy everyone that's not Team Flare. So tell me, the Mega Ring, did you share it? That's different, we competed for it, but... But what, you've got no excuse, Serena. When there is only one of something, it can't be shared. When something can't be shared, it will be fought over. And when something is fought over, some must survive without it. The only way to create a world where people live in beauty, a world without conflict or theft, is to reduce the number of living things. What about Pokemon? Ah. No response. Ha, huh, Lysander, what? Was, is he crying? Tears? Why? He's... he's crying. Pokémon shall no longer exist. Pokémon are wonderful beings. Humans have worked with Pokémon, and we've helped each other flourish. But precisely because of that, they will inevitably become tools for war and theft. Enough of this! You want to stop the ultimate weapon, and I refuse to do so, so I will keep you busy for just a moment. So I guess Lysander does have a bit of a kindness in his heart, as he sheds a tear because all of the Pokemon will be destroyed if he destroys all humankind. Still a pretty screwed up uh, plot twist here. I mean, I guess it wasn't really a plot twist, but just overall the plot of this game, definitely a lot deeper than it has been in the past. So let's go ahead and battle this Mian Shao here. Hi, jump kick. That may... Wow. Wow, Sancho. Looks like we revived you to let you die. Very, very unfortunate. Let's send out Brave then. And I believe I did a little bit of a change on Brave. I don't remember, actually. Let's see. Uh, yes, I did teach Brave... Ah, Flare Blitz. I went to the Move Relearner and he actually learned Flare Blitz, or she learned Flare Blitz, I guess at level 1 or some level that's lower than the one we evolved it at, so... Taught her Brave Bird, or was it Flare Blitz? Yeah, Flare Blitz, not Brave Bird. And I actually also taught someone an electric move, didn't I? I think I taught Finx Thunderbolt, so let's send out Finx, even though she's only level 41. Are all of my Pokemon female? I think Otto is literally just like the alpha male of our group of team members right now. And every other Pokemon is a female, so let's send out Finx the Sligu, who actually has Thunderbolt. We might not be able to survive. Wow, he goes for Outrage. Are you kidding me? Okay, well, just go for the Overkill, Gyarados. Thanks, man. You're really fun to play against, or I mean, we're not really playing. We're kind of trying to save the world here, but here are real fun opponents. Opponents? I've been saying words weird in this episode. I don't really care. I also realized uh, while playing on my free time that the Psychic move actually makes the noise that it did in Generation 1, which is really cool. As I use it again here, let's actually just listen to it, so here, I'll let you guys listen in. It's kind of faint, but you can hear it in there, it's like... That was a horrible representation of what it sounds like, but those of you that have played the Gen 1 games should know what Psychic sounded like in there. Um, 
I guess it's not just the Gen 1 games, but previous games in the series, uh, Psyche kind of had that weird dinging sound in the beginning of it. So I'm going to go ahead and send out Brave against this Pyroar here. I'm not sure how Pyroar does in the defensive stats, but we're going to go for a fly. I meant to go for an acrobatics and go for the one-hit kill, but I guess now we're going to fly high in the sky and crash down and it doesn't actually die, but... We should be able to kill it with one more acrobatics. Hyper Voice there actually doing a lot of damage. I have heard that Pyro is more of a special attacker, apparently. I mean, it's a lion. It looks like it would be a physical attacking Pokemon. Like, you know, Flare Blitz and you hitting you with that Body Slam uh, Giga Impact or something. But apparently he's more of a special attacker. So he's better with like Fire Blast and Hyper Voice, which is what Lysander actually uses on him. So that's pretty cool. Last Pokemon for him is going to be Honchkrow, which not quite dying to the one hit kill from the acrobatics there, but we actually survive and burn it, which is awesome because you're going to burn, 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 burn like Ellie Goulding. That's how you're going to burn. I should have just gone for a roost there and we would have gotten a free heal of 50% of our HP, but nope, overkill it with the Flare Blitz. I've been thinking of giving Brave the leftovers, but then that would make Acrobatics less powerful. I was thinking that uh, it might be a good idea if we had Flare Blitz, do recoil damage, and then heal back up with leftovers. Because I don't know how much recoil it does. I guess it depends on how much damage it does. But there goes Lysander once again. But what are you really protecting? A tomorrow that will only end up being worse than today? Very insightful words, man. This guy does give us some really good quotes, I gotta admit. Lysander is a man of wisdom. You're as strong as ever, but it's too late. There's no hope for you now. Go down to the lowest floor and see for yourself. It's not over yet. Let's take a look at the legendary Pokemon. Trainers are protected by Pokemon, but they're protect... But wait. Trainers are protected by Pokemon, but they protect Pokemon too, right? Look, you can see the entrance to the lower floors over there. Oh, so is the lovely Serena? Nope, I guess she's not going to be following us. I thought, Serena, you're here to help us out, man. Why are... Oh, okay, never mind. Hi, Serena. I'm so glad that we get to share this moment. Can you heal my Pokemon by chance? No, oh, I guess not. Oh, boy. I'm afraid we're going to have to ask you to turn back. The legendary Pokemon is at the end of this chamber, after all. Why did you tell them that? Who would even do something like that? All right, so let's take on a couple of Team Flare admins here, or an admin and I guess a grunt. Crack that neck, boy. That's how we do it up in Team Flare Town. I should have said like F-Town, but... Oh. Actually, F-Town sounds like uh, something different that I shouldn't say. So how about not F-Town? Let's go for the low sweep on Lyperd. I don't think it'll do that much damage because Lyperd isn't very heavy. Uh, I did actually also update Otto's moveset, so now he's got that psychic power. Go, Meow Sick! Speaking of Psychic, she actually uses Psychic on her Meowsic there. Pretty awesome that Serena's got a Psychic too. It's like we're both telepathically connected, you know? I'm doing this game blind, or well, since it came out, I was started doing it blind. And actually, Barbara is learning Razor Shell, so... What to get rid? I guess I'll get rid of X-Scissor. I taught him X-Scissor just because he could learn it, and it's a TM, so if we want it back at some point, we can just teach it back to him, but... Uh, going for the taunt there, making that Lapert angry. But we're gonna go for our low kick, and it is actually still a one-hit kill. I taught Otto the low kick, as I was saying. Uh, gave him a little bit of an updated moveset. I actually updated a lot of my Pokemon's movesets, because a lot of them were kind of lacking. Uh, Pansham, or sorry, Pangoro Sancho Panza, I think, learned a couple of new moves, or I taught him. I just basically went to the move relearner and checked out any cool moves that all of my Pokemon could learn. So let's go ahead and heal up here, because I think we've got a couple of more battles coming up until we get to the legendary Pokemon. Now, I'm actually thinking as of right now... Uh, of doing the rest of these Team Flare battles, and it might be a shorter episode, but I want to keep the Legendary episode as its own thing. I feel like that's super important, and I really, really want to experience this cutscene, so I'm super looking forward to this. Uh, so I'm hoping that there's a bunch more Team Flare grunts to battle, so this episode isn't super short. What did you say there? I get what Lysander is trying to say, but his methods are insane! I'd have to agree with that. Well, I don't really get what Lysander is saying, he just... He's saying that he wants to kill everyone, so... Like, I mean, it makes sense that he just wants peace for the world, but that's not the way to do it, man. You can't just kill everyone and hope that the world becomes better. Uh, there was a movie about that, wasn't there? Well, not about killing everyone, but there was a movie about wanting to create peace in the world by... Well, there's a bunch of shows about that, actually. I know Gundam 00 is kind of like, let's create peace in the world by killing everyone. And actually, Death Note is like that, too. So... 
That's it. There's a lot of shows that are sort of similar to that. Death Note very, very specifically is like that. It's like, hey, we're gonna create peace in the world by killing everyone. And in the end, as you guys, if you haven't watched it, then I don't really want to spoil it, but you can kind of expect that it doesn't really work out the way that they plan for it to be, so... I mean, if Lysander were just to sit down and watch a couple of animes, he might learn a thing or two, you know? He might learn that violence and destruction is not the way for world peace. Actually, if he just sat down and looked at any country that tries to resolve anything by war, he'd kind of learn that that's not really the way to solve things. And somehow, Meowstic and Maynectric pretty much single-handedly won that battle. Pangoro did nothing there. Whoa! Are you going crazy there? Yes, I lost, but no matter. Lysander is the one who will take care of things. I may have lost, but it doesn't matter. I say the same thing as my co-partner person. Co- co-worker? Are they really co-workers? Like, can you be co-workers if you just work together at a gang? Like, that doesn't seem like the best work environment. That doesn't sound like work at all, so... Just gonna use a Hyper Potion on Sancho here. And I believe that may have been the last two Team Flare Grunts that we battled. Because we battled two admins in a row, so... Don't think there'd be many more coming up. Mo, Serena! Hey, it's Shauna. I don't believe it. What are you doing here? I'm sorry. I know. I'm just gonna slow you down. So why are you here? But... But friends should stick together! Aw. I, I kind of feel sad. Just look at her face! <laughs> look at... Look, look at Serena's... F look at her face! She's so sad. I'm the one who should be apologizing. You came all the way out here and I wasn't very considerate of your feelings. You are right. Friends should stick together. Mo, we should all go together, right? Of course. Yes, friends all the way, man. I knew you'd agree. Okay, Shauna, Mo, and I will go ahead. Stay close to us, okay? Okay, thank you. Awesome. So looks like we're actually going to have our whole group of friends joining us for the battle here. I'm kind of hoping that Trevor and Tierno will actually join up with us. I was just checking if my Pokemon were all healed up, but looks like they're nowhere to be seen as of now. I really hope that they're somewhere up ahead as we've got more Team Flare grunts and admins to battle in a tag team duo. It would be really cool if they actually made you battle with like Shauna. Like have one battle with each of them, you know? The first battle with Serena, then like Shauna joins along, then we have another battle with like Shauna, then Trevor joins along, we have a battle with him. That would have been a pretty cool idea. I wish they would have done that, but I'm guessing all the battles are just gonna be with Serena. Either that or there's gonna be a ton, ton, ton of Team Flare battles in this episode. I really don't know. As I've mentioned many times, I'm playing this for the first time right now, and I'm super excited because I've heard so many great things about like the climax of this game. So far, I mean, I'm gonna be honest, uh, the story's not that great. It just kind of seemed like they packed it in there randomly. Like, the entire playthrough, we didn't really hear too much about Team Flair, mainly just Lysander, to be honest. And Lysander was a very cool character to learn about, but it didn't really talk about Team Flair all that often. It was just like, hey, I'm Lysander, I'm gonna show up and be kind of this weird guy with giant flaming hair and you're totally not going to be able to tell that I'm on Team Flare even though my hair is super flaring with flares but I'm randomly gonna be the Team Flare boss and destroy the entire world so how do you feel about that? Yeah that's kind of how the story of this game goes in a nutshell you know if we were to make like one of those like nutshell videos Pokemon X and Y story in a nutshell it'd pretty much be hey I'm Lysander I made the Hollow Caster. And now I'm going to destroy everyone that's not in Team Flare. So, hope you guys have fun with that. It's an electric lock. What should we do? This might help. It's a device that helps you when you're stuck on a puzzle. Clement gave it to me. An electronic lock and a puzzle are the same sort of thing, right? How does this work? What? Ta-da! The lock open! Oh, and the device actually broke. Amazing, Shauna! You and Clement's device are both full of surprises. So we're finally here. The legendary Pokemon is inside. Let's go help it. So guys, I believe this is going to be the end of this episode. Next time, we're going to be taking on the legendary Pokemon of the Kalos region. And I've actually got a little surprise planned. As you see, the title of this video is X and Y. So I'm going to be showing you what, uh, I guess, both of the cutscenes for this looks like. And I'm pretty sure that as soon as we step through those doors, we're actually going to be seeing that. So thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like, and I'll see you all next time.